हेलो वेलकम टू इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रहेंसिव लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म बाय जूस एग्जाम प्रेप इन दिस इवनिंग वी ऑल हैव गैदर टुगेदर टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन इंजीनियरिंग दैट इज प्रेजर मेजरमेंट दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इट इज नॉट ओनली यूजफुल फॉर द गेट सिलेबस इट इज वेरी मच यूजफुल फॉर द पी एस एग्जामिनेशन and is very very much useful for the interview preparation also so we will try to cover and discuss all possible dimensions of the pressure measurement in this monsoon special series i sincerely request every one of you please connect to me till the end of all the lectures in this particular series i am very sure that you will come to know many new things and you will enjoy the beauty of the pressure measurement along with the level measurement so first of all let me greet everyone yes <laughs> rithik good evening and surya kumar good evening madhuri good evening well so i think more of the students are about to join with me anyway before going to the actual section on the pressure measurement i would like to introduce about myself such that the new students on the platform will come to know about me well <coughs> as you all know my name is panindra all put together i have 12 plus years of teaching experience up to now i have guided more than 50000 students all across the country especially in the subjects of control system circuit theory and industrial instrumentation and i am specially known for industrial instrumentation of course this is sufficient about myself let's quickly get into the topic but before going to the topic of pressure measurement let me quickly share the schedule of this monsoon special series because this should be with you i know many of you might miss this particular schedule we will going to have six lectures in monsoon special series which will try to cover the pressure measurement as well as level measurement which are considered as two important topics in the entire instrumentation syllabus and i would like to mention this point if you are interested i repeat once again if you are interested if you are sincere if you are serious and if you are willing to learn new concepts then you can request us we will going to extend the series for more time and more number of days well as you all can see the very first lecture in the monsoon special series is about the pressure measurement one and today we are on the live and in the immediate session that means tomorrow session we will going to continue the pressure measurement and even in day after tomorrow also we will going to discuss about the pressure measurement after completion of the pressure measurement topics we will going to discuss about the level measurement in three different lectures so i sincerely request every one of you please connect to me till the end of all the lectures again and again don't keep the messages in the telegram group when i am discussing when i am on live let's complete every possible dimension of every topic here clear so is my audio and voice both are clear or not audio and video quality well priyanka i think so many students are there today okay let me go with selected number names shivani good evening jagadish good evening harish good evening hari krishna good evening uday kumar good evening well so i first of all welcome all of you to the session and i am going to say only one point if you are having the patience till the end of all lectures in this particular series i am very sure that you will definitely know many new things okay well but let's go to the topic directly as i was uh, continuously saying before going to the entire discussion on the pressure measurement let me tell you what and all we are trying to cover or what we are supposed to discuss or what we are going to discuss in pressure measurement as usually as you all know first i will start from the basics of pressure measurement assuming that all of you are at the 0th level so that i can deliver the basics in the easiest way so that you will be able to understand the tough concepts very easily okay right so once i cover the basics of pressure measurement then we will going to see in this lecture about the barometer and the special device called piezometer most of the students they might already heard about the term called piezo barometer but i am very sure that very few students might have heard about piezometer well good evening good evening <coughs> ashok good evening isha agrawal good evening prudvi reddy why right so once we complete basics after that as i said we will going to discuss about the barometer and piezometer once i complete the topics then we will going to discuss about the psu and gate level questions this is very important because i know there are many students in the comment box who are about to write 2023 exam and there might be so many students 
who have already written the exam and waiting for the interview questions. That's why at last we will also discuss about the interview level questions also. It is not possible for me to discuss directly the interview level questions because my orientation of taking the subject is different and I pre-assume that every one of you are at 0th level. So let me explain the concepts first and then we will go into go to the interview level step by step. Will it be fine? Every one of you, you have to reply to my <laughs> statement. Every one of you, is it clear to everyone? Voice, audio, video quality, everything. If it is clear, so please. Yes. Hi, sir. Yes. Hi, Hari. So if everything is clear, so please put that comment in the comment section. Yes, it's clear so that it will give energy to me and we will move forward. Very good evening. Very good evening. Bharat, very good evening. Well, so as I was saying that we will go to the first definition of the pressure. So before going to the pressure measurement, first of all, it is the minimum responsibility of everyone to understand the basic definition of the pressure. Right. So what do you mean by pressure? Pressure is defined as a force per unit area that a fluid ejects exerts on its surroundings not only fluid basically it is a force per unit area and remember that this particular force what we are applying it should be perpendicular to the surface what do you mean by that suppose let us take this example yes sir very clear very clear thank you thank you very much suppose let us take this particular device right so for example if i say this is a surface right so how do we calculate the pressure so just if I apply the force perpendicular to this surface, then we have to take only the perpendicular force and the area which is under the force or which is actually implied because of the force. Clear? Otherwise, let us take this particular cylindrical. Assume that this is in the cylindrical shape. Please don't argue with me, sir. This is not in the cylindrical shape. Let's assume that this is in the cylindrical shape. Right? So this is the upper part. Am I right? So if I apply the force perpendicular to this upper surface, then that can be considered for the pressure calculation. The most important thing and the fundamental point is in pressure calculations, we are only interested in the force which is acting perpendicular to the surface. Clear? This is a very important point and most of the students doesn't know this one. I hope it's clear now, right? So now moving ahead. <laughs> so how can we define the formula for the pressure? But before going to the formula, naturally, I require to give some basics. So let me go with the basics. Suppose, as I said, if we consider this as a cylinder, for example, if it is placed on the ground, assume a situation that this is the area of cross section. So let's consider that this is the area of cross section. Clear? So that area of cross section, I can consider this as capital A. And by chance, if I apply the force perpendicular to this circular area of cross section, then we can define the pressure as nothing but the force per the area. That means how much amount of the force we are applying divided by the area which is actually uh, adopting the force in the perpendicular direction. Clear? So the force per unit area or force per the area on which you are applying the force, it is considered for the pressure calculation. I hope you understood that because this is very easy and especially my students can easily understand this. Right? So this is the pressure applied on the solids i repeat this is the pressure applied on solid particles because this particular cylinder is actually nothing but the solid correct usually in many of our measurements especially in the weight measuring instruments whenever you want to measure the weight we are going to apply more amount of pressure clear but if you go one step beyond this the instrumentation is really very interesting, right? So let's go one step beyond this and see what are the other aspects of the same pressure measurement. Suppose if you consider the cylinder like this, it is a very much cylindrical shape, isn't it? So if there is a fluid, let's assume that there is an elastic material which is pasted on the surface of the cylinder. For example, if I consider <laughs> Pranam Gurudeva, thank you, thank you very much. Suppose let us say this is a cylinder, assume that this is a cylinder. On top of the cylinder, or on the surface of the cylinder, we are going to paste elastic material. What do you mean by elastic material? If you apply some kind of force, the elastic material may stretch or change its dimension. So that means we have an elastic material here and I am taking the elastic material and I am pasting on the surface of this. Clear? So let's keep our discussion exactly up to that level. In by chance, if at all the liquid flows or assume that there is a fluid which is flowing like this. 
then only what happens if it is even fluid particles you can consider this fluid as a air or even you can consider this as a liquid particle let us assume that liquid is flowing from a to b here so what generally happens when the fluid particles are flowing through the pipe quite naturally the fluid particles will be random in motion right so let's assume that we are not having a proper streamline flow then what will going to happen naturally the particles will apply the pressure on the surface here clear so that means if you look at the animation this is how exactly the fluid particles will apply the pressure on the entire surface of the cylindrical pipe clear so then what will going to happen so can i consider this as a pressure or not all of you please let me know <laughs> sunila yes hello sir hello right now you should tell me should i consider this particular uh, you know of course this particular mechanism as a pressure or not yes we can consider this as a pressure but this is the pressure exerted by fluid particles on the walls of the cylindrical pipe i repeat this is a pressure exerted on the walls of the cylindrical pipe by the fluid particles so the statements are very very important initially it looks very basic and many of the students may feel that these are too much of basis but slowly when we go deep into the topic and i'm very sure that you will go one step beyond the actual basic level clear so <laughs> yes 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 madhuri very good so that's all about the basic idea related to the pressure on the solid and the pressure exerted by the fluid particles in a cylindrical pipe clear so if they are applying the pressure see every fluid particle is trying to apply the pressure on the surrounding wall right what does it mean it is applying the pressure means it is already carrying some amount of the pressure with this clear so the amount of pressure the fluid particles are already taking during the journey it is considered as a pressure energy because of this pressure energy the fluid particles in the journey they will hit the wall this side this side upside and downside everywhere they will try to apply the force clear so now you must understand pressure measurement in two different ways what is the, what is the meaning of two different ways right so the first is pressure applied on the solids and the second is pressure applied by the fluid particles that fluid might be air particles and that fluid might be water particles or liquid particles is it clear am i clear so far i think i am uh, speaking too much fast i guess so you must tell to me whether i am clear or not okay so if you say yes then we will move forward if you have any questions please keep in the comment box and i am having lot of patience and lot of energy let the session continue for 45 minutes or 1 hour 1 and a half hour i don't mind you have to understand the concept today before you are leaving the session okay so this is the two these are the two important differences you know the main difference between the pressure applied on the solid and pressure carried by the fluids and being an instrumentation engineer it is your responsibility to understand both of these two things it is not about only the pressure applied on the solid we have to equally be very interested to measure the pressure applied by the fluid particles in the motion clear so moving ahead yes sir yes navin narendra yes very good right so let's go directly to the <laughs> another level of the basics because as i said first four to five slides will be about the basics of pressure measurement and then we'll go deeply after some time we'll go too deeply and after some time we'll go extremely deeply into the subject okay so the very first thing is what are the units of the pressure measurement it looks very silly to many of the students many of the students they feel that oh sir we know our units of everything okay but when you go to the interviews they will ask very very simple question what is the relation between the pascal and bar because there are some specific instruments which has to be which has to be read out only in some particular unit clear so let's go with this one so the si unit of pressure is pascal this is the most common and conventional unit for the pressure so usually the pressure unit will be explained or expressed especially in newton per meter square clear so simple because we already know that the uh, pressure formula is equal to force per area isn't it so the force unit is newton area unit is meter square so obviously the unit of the pressure will be newton per meter square isn't it and then one more common unit of the pressure is includes so pounds per square inch so this is usually called as a psi many of the times 
in instrumentation when we are covering and uh, converting current to pressure as well as pressure to current we will use this kind of unit called psi every unit has its own significance clear and <laughs> we have the units like atmospheric pressure bar inches of mercury this is a special unit which we will going to again discuss about this in McLeod gauge that's why I am giving every unit here itself so that you people should not face any difficulty in the upcoming lectures clear so and the most important thing is mm of mercury as well as mercury as well as star so let's have brief idea about the conversion of the unit from one unit to another unit the very first thing is one pascal means of course one pascal is actually nothing but one newton per meter square okay so let me take another color so that you will be able to understand yes one pascal means how many bars basically one pascal is nothing but 10 power minus 5 bars similarly one bar can be simply written as a 10 power 5 pascal many times in our discussion straight away i will move from the pascal to bar bar to pascal so you must understand everything so easily okay right so <laughs> one bar is nothing but 10 power 5 pascal and it can also be written like a ten, uh, of course a uh, thousand kilopascal also it's easy right so moving ahead one mm of hg how can i write one mm of hg is particularly nothing but 133.3 to 2 pascal okay this particular unit so rigorously we will use especially in the low pressure measurement zone clear and similarly one mm of hg can be written as 0 0.0013332 it's not a great job it's not rocket science just you have to multiply this with the 10 power minus 5 you will going to get this value so so simple this is right so just multiply with the 10 power minus 5 then the overall value will going to become this very easy isn't it right now moving ahead to the next one one atmospheric pressure this unit can be written as 101325 so it's very easy 101 is a number easily you can remember 3 plus 2 5 like that you can remember so that it is nothing but 101325 and you will understand what is the importance of this in barometer as well as piezometer also clear and when it comes to bar just multiply this number with the 10 power minus 5 then you will going to get this number is it easy to all of you <laughs> narendra yes good evening right moving ahead one tar means what it is the easiest unit in my opinion because one tar and this value this value both will be same here clear so let me erase this 10 power minus 5 so that you will understand better way this one so let me erase this one clear so one tar is actually nothing but one mm of hg only that's why this value here and even here also both are actually same here so let me take another color here yes these two are same here correct so that means from the units it is clear evidence that one mm of hg can be simply written as one tar clear so whenever you are finding these units don't mess up with the units it's very very simple isn't it right so now up to here is it clear or not if it is clear so please put your comment in the comment section i will get the energy if i get the energy you will get lot of information okay so the idea is so simple if i say one pascal specially right so it can be written as one newton per meter square this is the first thing you should remember and second is very very important one <coughs> bar it must be written as a 10 power 5 pascal so this is also very important and one atm if i say whenever one atm you must say immediately that it should be equal to 101325 pascal so these are the three important notations or you can say it's important units or important relations between the units in our regular session clear now without any second thought let's go one step even beyond this particular topic so all of you please tell me is it clear everything so far yes clear clear very good so let's move on to the topic if anything is not clear on the ppt or if anything is not audible to you or if you are not able to see anything please let me know we will going to keep the photo of that in the comment section okay well moving ahead to the next one where do we really use the pressure measurement so i will leave this slide to you now let me see how many of you can answer this where do we really use the pressure measurement see you all are engineers right so without knowing why you are studying the topic trust me you must not study the topic or in other words whenever you are reading any topic or whenever you are learning any topic or whenever you are studying any topic you must know why you require the topic in engineering correct so why do you require this particular topic mohan sai <laughs> good evening yes 
so why do we require pressure measurement any idea from your side now i will understand that how many of you really have a good idea over the subject okay the very first thing is you require the pressure measurement to understand the pressure on the solids suppose let us say i am standing on the floor when i am standing on the floor my weight is perpendicularly applied on the floor so when the weight is applied when the weight is acting perpendicularly on the force i mean on the floor i can consider that as a force isn't it so of course the weight is considered as a force and it is perpendicularly acting on the floor so naturally it is considered as a pressure correct so many times we come across for the weight measurement where do we require the pressure by default clear so that is one important thing right safety and control oh shashank very good nice i love you right so this is pressure on the solid first thing is we need to understand how much weight is put on a floor so weight is actually considered as a force and that is perpendicular to the floor so there we require the pressure measurement right so and then moving to the next level next very important level pressure exerted by the fluid so most of the times the fluids pass through the a closed container so fluid can pass through a, a closed pipe or fluid can even flow through a open channel also right so if you want to understand what is the pressure exerted by the fluid particles on the wall when they are in the motion then we require the concept of pressure measurement right <laughs> okay thank you right so the third one is level measurement okay so many of you really feel that oh sir this is pressure measurement then why do you require about the level measurement see most of the times in instrumentation many different parameters are connected together means if you are good at the pressure measurement then we can use the concept of pressure measurement to measure the level that's why pressure measurement is very important before going to the level measurement clear so that is one thing and second is of course temperature measurement so many of you may feel very you know like a different way right sir how do we measure the temperature from measure pressure measurement that's where the beauty of instrumentation lies once we know what is the pressure that can be utilized to assess the value of the temperature also we will see in this lecture okay moving ahead to the next one that is flow measurement and most of my students they already know that we can measure the flow measurement of course flow is a very important variable to measure and that can be done very easily with the pressure measurement so more or less we have plenty of applications on the pressure measurement at the end of this lecture series on pressure measurement i will tell you where and all we will use the pressure measurement in real time application clear so good evening navin <laughs> right so moving ahead to the next level right so suppose let us take here after the actual topic will going to start and i am saying once again be serious and commit and stay till the end then only you will be able to understand the beauty if you are living in between then obviously you will not be able to understand anything trust me okay suppose let us take this is a ground level assume that this is a ground level okay so there are some important terms which you must understand before going to the actual topic of the pressure measurement clear suppose if you take that as a ground this is let's consider that it is a swimming pool or it may be well right so if you consider all the way from here to here let's consider that this is a water right you can even consider this as a simple example like swimming pool right so the upper surface is considered as a ground and the deep we are going to have water correct so now i have a question suppose if i consider the depth of the water as h right what is this h every one of you answer this in the comment section what do you mean by h h is actually nothing but the depth of the water here after you should habituate these terms even while you are sleeping if i ask you a question you should be able to answer the <laughs> answer clearly so h is actually nothing but the water level in the tank or in the swimming pool or you can consider anywhere okay now i have a question suppose let us take two situations clear so he is the first person let me take here he is the mr uh, you know first person let us say and he is the second person now you tell me what is the difference between both of these two people first person is standing on the ground sorry standing on the ground second person is under the water maybe assume that this person is hiding under the water don't argue with me why he is hiding okay right one person is standing on the ground another person is staying or in the water staying in the water now you tell me what is the pressure that is acting on the first person what is the pressure that is acting on the second person any one of you 
what is the pressure acting on the first person what is the pressure acting on the second person very interesting question this is and from this we can all the way bring the entire pressure measurement okay you will really feel amazing once we continue this topic okay so the very first person on the very first person usually the person who is there on the top of the ground right so the atmospheric pressure will be acting on his head right so why because he will be standing on the ground so many eight particles will be there and all air particles they will apply the pressure on the head and that pressure is usually considered as atmospheric pressure why it is considered as atmospheric pressure because the pressure acting by or the pressure exerted by the air molecules on the head of the person is considered as a atmospheric pressure clear air pressure on the first person very good so what about the second person who is standing on the bottom now on the second person you must understand that up to here so look at that this is going to be the atmospheric pressure correct up to ground and additional to that there is so much amount of the water here and this water head is also there above this person head here right that means on the head of the second person huge amount of the water is there above that atmospheric pressure is there what does it mean on top of him so if i take this person specially how can i write the overall pressure on him so the overall pressure on him can be written of course we don't require to take this direction right so more important thing is the total amount of the fluid pressure here so people can usually write this as p fluid here so the p fluid means the pressure exerted by the fluid on the head of the second person can be simply written as equal to the density of the liquid into acceleration due to gravity into h where h is nothing but the water level clear rho g h is considered clearly as the pressure offered by the fluid only i repeat pressure acting by the fluid on the head of the person clear now what would be the total pressure on the person who is standing here now what is the total pressure that is acting by this acting upon this person in a very simple way i can say that is the total amount of the pressure is acting on the second person can be written as absolute pressure that is equal to this atmospheric pressure clear that is because of the air molecules plus additional to that we have this fluid also correct pressure because of the fluid usually this pressure which is offered by the fluid in this case it would be considered as a gauge pressure here so please listen this points very very important and i am very sure that in the course of discussion many times we use these words and i am very sure most of the students cannot understand this okay so usually the pressure offered by this fluid is considered as a gauge pressure additional to the gauge pressure we need to have atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure together it will be called as a absolute pressure clear so this is so important and very easy to understand most of the sensors what we are going to use they will give the gauge pressure calculation okay best example is manometer or bodan tube all this will give the information of the gauge pressure that's why whenever you are sitting in the interview channel they will ask a very simple question that how to measure the gauge pressure they will not ask how to measure the pressure they will ask how to measure the gauge pressure then you should give the gauges are as the sensors which can measure the gauge pressure and then how do we calculate the absolute pressure simple look at the atmospheric pressure and add the atmospheric pressure with the gauge pressure then we will going to get the absolute pressure now the question is how do we calculate the atmospheric pressure this is very interesting isn't it so i told you the simple way that we have several sensors which can be used to measure the gauge pressure best example is we have you know manometer is there and we have bodan tube also there there are several sensors which can measure the gauge pressure but how do we calculate the atmospheric pressure there should be a sensor for that so usually we use a special device called barometer okay i repeat the word we use a special device called barometer and the barometer always provides the information of the atmospheric pressure and that will be added with the gauge pressure to get the absolute pressure clear so this is how we do the uh, measurement but remember this point there are some techniques there are some sensors there are some devices which are going to give the absolute pressure information directly it is obvious right so if you have a device which can provide the absolute pressure information directly obviously that is the best choice correct so now it is your duty 
every one of you have to put some effort and find out which gauges or which sensors or which techniques can directly give the data of the absolute pressure and i want to know this at least not by this class at least in the next session you must give that answer okay and i will definitely ask this question in the tomorrow session also which devices or which sensors can directly give the reading of the absolute pressure because we know there are several sensors to measure the gas pressure and barometer reading will be added to the gas pressure to get the absolute pressure but do you have really any sensors or techniques which directly give or provide the reading of the absolute pressure okay right rithrik sir is gas pressure is only due to fluid sir <coughs> right so your question will be answered during the discussion naturally because i know so many students are having the same question okay so rithrik you have patience please have patience for another 15 to 20 minutes i am very sure that your question will be answered okay moving ahead to the next one if the gas pressure is greater than 0 then we have to say absolute pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure obviously right isn't it so let me take a few minutes here because these things are very important many of the students they read so many sensors and they will buy heart so many formulas without having the basic knowledge so if at all the gas pressure is a positive number right so then obviously absolute pressure is more than atmospheric pressure isn't it suppose let us say this is a uh, something like you know 101 uh, 325 pascal right and if i say this is a 10 pascals for example so if i add these two then absolute pressure will be more than atmospheric pressure similarly if at all if the gas pressure is less than zero that means if the gas pressure is negative then obviously i can take the i can say that the absolute pressure will be less than the atmospheric pressure this means there is a possibility that absolute pressure can become less than atmospheric pressure and this is very very important and i have seen several students who appeared for isro inter uh, interviews especially they will ask the questions on this clear so they will definitely put a question between these two when there is a possibility that absolute pressure is less than atmospheric pressure answer is if the gas pressure is negative quantity clear right so now moving ahead to the next one yes this pressure is is also called as a vacuum pressure this means whenever you are trying to measure vacuum pressure you will get a negative value for the gas pressure when you get a negative value for the gas pressure inherently it will be less than atmospheric pressure hope you understood this one clear so <laughs> that's all about this one now moving ahead to the next topic but before that i would like to ask i think there are around 30 students who are regularly watching so please tell me is it clear so far or not yes or no <coughs> yes or no Raj Shekhar, very good very good Raj Shekhar. now i would like to ask a simple question have you ever felt this one during the uh, aeroplane or else when you are traveling in the aeroplane or in the space shift even if you uh, watch regularly the bollywood movies they say that vacuum pressure low pressure like that right so even in the space when the uh, i mean astronauts are traveling in the space the pressure is usually very very less right and that is considered as a vacuum pressure that's why the pressure whatever you are calculating there it is considered as a negative pressure because that will be definitely overall absolute pressure will be less than the atmospheric pressure clear yes sir yes yes very good shashank very good right now i have two questions to you okay number one suppose if you are in the space if you are in the space tell me what is the relation between absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure i will ask this question like this clear now already i have given the answer so tell me if you are in the space don't argue with me sir how we can go to the space okay assume that you are in the space right you are in the uh, aircraft or else maybe you know space ship right so if you are in the spacecraft Tell me what is the relation between these two absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure the answer is very simple that absolute pressure will be less than atmospheric pressure the reason is here we are in the vacuum and the gas pressure is less than less so that is very very easy to understand now let me tell you another important uh, story here right so please see here these things are very important absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure clear so this i am saying that this is in the space correct so where there is a negative gas pressure and this is underwater or you can see underwater or under sea anywhere okay now tell me underwater what is the situation oh very good Shashank. love you again right absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure tell me now 
what is the situation here under water means gas pressure is positive clear gas pressure is positive means i can say simply that right so it would be more than this right so absolute pressure will be more than atmospheric pressure you may ask a question to me sir how come the gas pressure is positive only here see see here even so tell me in this particular expression rho is a positive quantity g is also a positive quantity h is also a positive quantity right so then obviously rho g h will be a positive quantity then that's why the absolute pressure will be definitely greater than atmospheric pressure okay hello sir yes 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 so this is all about the basic idea right now moving ahead to the next one that is absolute uh, pressure versus gas pressure so this particular chart whatever i am giving now if you have pen and paper with you please write down these things because i am very sure that in the later sessions we will definitely require these things okay where is ritvik and <laughs> madhavi and deepak all of you is it clear to everyone or not right so you have to keep on answer to me so that i will understand that yes you are following then my energy levels will increase right so first of all if i consider this as a zero pressure okay absolute zero pressure right so now for example if i say this is atmospheric pressure so if i say this is atmospheric pressure if i measure this atmospheric pressure so generally whatever the atmospheric pressure you are measuring that is usually called as a barometric pressure that means barometric pressure is nothing but atmospheric pressure because in many of the questions simply they will ask a question uh, you know like uh, barometric pressure is this much many students they will going to see like this barometric pressure means in a simple language it is a atmospheric pressure nothing more than that clear so but the indicated pressure by the barometer may be different okay now look at that so suppose if at all if i add the positive gas pr uh, pressure for this because we have already seen that the absolute pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus gas pressure isn't it this is what we have discussed today right so suppose if the gas pressure is positive right then overall absolute pressure is more than atmospheric pressure that's why you see this is a net value here so that means the gas pressure plus this atmospheric pressure if we add both of these two then we will going to get the total absolute pressure here clear so this is absolute pressure similarly if you take the negative value so see here from here to here whatever we got here that is called as a absolute pressure right now by chance if at all if from the atmospheric pressure if the gas pressure is subtracted right so that means negative gas pressure suppose by chance if it is a negative number then what will going to happen atmospheric pressure minus some value naturally the absolute value will be less than atmospheric pressure that's why you can see in the second case absolute pressure here it will be actually less compared to this atmospheric pressure here clear so there are two cases i am explaining in the very first case you can see this pressure is more than the atmospheric pressure in the second case you can see that this pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure here clear so yes yes following very good very good deepak right so this is all about this why i have given so much of importance to these topics is many people they are overconfident they feel that they know everything but when really when i ask the questions even the top rank students also they will not be able to answer these things properly right so for that let us understand or let me understand how much you understood from a example question right so <laughs> let me take the first question here let me see how many of you will answer this very quickly and this question was uh, not only asked in the gate examination in the 1996 for one mark by isc bangalore it was also asked similar kind of question was asked in brc even in hpcl also not not in hpcl isro okay isro also so please see a pressure gauge is used to measure vacuum so please see here how beautifully it was mentioned so and he told that pressure gauge what does it mean a pressure gauge naturally indicates a gas pressure isn't it i repeat a pressure gauge by default it will indicate gas pressure there are some special type of uh, gauges which will indicate the absolute pressure okay answer to this question a pressure gauge is used to measure the vacuum pressure that indicates a pressure of 5 kilo pascal okay if the atmospheric pressure is 100 kilo pascal then what would be the absolute pressure okay so answer to this question i am waiting for your response even four options are there you must answer fast okay so <laughs> right shashank what is the answer oh very fast shivani yes shivani very good one out five let's see whether that is correct or wrong that's why i told you that many of you really feel that 
most of the times you know the things but you have to put it very appropriate way okay so next anyone shashank deepak mohan ritvik sallapalam hari krishna <coughs> right so any answer from your side one by one let's go a little bit slowly right even the session may take little bit more duration deepak <laughs> very good deepak right rashekar 95 good any other people right a mohan sai a very good so you must be very careful they told that already this gauge pressure gauge is used to measure the vacuum pressure correct already i told you that vacuum pressure means it is negative pressure correct so even though the indication is 5 kilo pascal technically the value is minus 5 kilo pascal correct so now he also told that the atmospheric pressure is what atmospheric pressure is 100 kilo pascal right so now even though it was mentioned as the gas pressure is equal to 5 kilo pascal you must take this as a minus 5 kilo pascal this is the way point where many students will commit the mistake yes sir thank you right right now what would be the absolute pressure so the absolute pressure is equal to as i say <laughs> right uh, atmospheric pressure plus gas pressure now tell me what would be the correct answer here so atmospheric pressure is 100 kilo pascal as i was saying and minus we have 5 kilo pascal here of course this would be equal to how much this is equal to 95 kilo pascal correct now shivani may argue with me shivani will argue with me sir how dare you to take gas pressure is negative quantity here i took this as a positive quantity see it is common sense right suppose if you take gas pressure as positive let us think in that way right so if you take p gas let us take gas pressure as a positive quantity like 5 kilo pascal only in that case what will going to happen if you calculate the absolute pressure it will become like what 100 kilo pascal that is the atmospheric pressure plus 5 kilo pascal then it will going to become what it will going to become 105 kilo pascal what does it mean it means that when you are measuring the vacuum pressure you are agreeing that the vacuum pressure is more than the atmospheric pressure is it correct no right we just now uh, discussed that the vacuum pressure will be lower than the atmospheric pressure but in the second case in this calculations it is clearly showing that absolute pressure is 105 kilo pascal which is more than the atmospheric pressure here correct which is more than the atmospheric pressure this is 100 percent not possible right so this is the way at least you should use the common sense okay you must use the common sense that's why i would like to see nice to see user pattern thank you thank you very much pattern so this is wrong why it is correct here so at least try to understand this absolute pressure is 95 kilo pascal and that is less than atmospheric pressure yes that will happen when we deal with the vacuum because the vacuum pressure is negative so naturally the absolute pressure should come less than the atmospheric pressure clear so that is how at least you should you know re-verify the things now what is the correct option here option a so many students have answered shivani is it clear to you i need your response there are one or two students who have given this so please look at this and answer properly okay <laughs> now moving to the next question this is a very interesting question let me see how many of you will answer <laughs> where are you madhuri where are you deepak you are not giving the answers right very good very good right yes now look at that this is the second question and the question is the net pressure acting on the submarine what do you mean by submarine okay submarine you know uh, if you ask me how to define how can i say that is kind of warship that is traveling under the water okay most of the you know for defense applications uh, majority of the countries they use under moving underwater ships and those are considered as a submarines our armed forces they used to travel in this right which is traveling under the water at 100 meter depth is dash kilo pascals approximately now let me see how many of you can answer this what apart right <laughs> so right so look at this so again there are four options here and this is a submarine photo i think it is visible and from the top of the water to bottom of the water here this is 100 meter distance clear so as usually this is considered as a ground level here right so let me call this as a ground level here right so what was the question the net pressure acting on submarine right so that means if you take the surface of the top submarine here 
what would be the pressure that is acting on here clear so that is a very good question right genuine question so let us take this as a one here so any question any answer from your side nice explanation thank you balu thank you very much so please tell me so i don't want you know this kind of positive compliments i want you people to get the concept out of it and get good marks right so we have a submarine here on submarine what is the total pressure that is acting see how beautifully it is uh, written here net pressure means he is asking he is expecting absolute pressure or gas pressure first of all try to understand this ashishank 1100 very good rashaker too fast yeah you people are okay right so net pressure this means that we require the absolute pressure clear so let me write down absolute pressure like this how can i write the absolute pressure on the wall of the submarine here so on the wall here so that is because we all know that atmospheric pressure is acting here so let me call this as a atmospheric pressure and from here to here 100 percent the liquid column is acting right so it is under the water and the water height is almost 100 meters correct so therefore absolute pressure can be written as equal to atmospheric pressure plus gas pressure correct so let us say gas pressure we can write down or else in a simple words because we are still in the basics let me use the simple simple words so that you will understand this better way so this is the pressure on the submarine by the fluid here clear so therefore what will going to happen here atmospheric pressure so in pascals because the question is about kilopascals so what is the uh, uh, value of atmospheric pressure here 101325 pascal did you understood why i have discussed all these things at the starting itself right so 101325 pascal additional to that this is a fluid right so let us say this is a fluid and what is the pressure because of the fluid that is the density of the fluid into acceleration due to the gravity into h right so simple right h is nothing but the liquid height here so moving ahead any one of you please give the answers don't sit ideal like that right so you have to answer this that's why again and again i am saying that you require pen and paper for my classes okay so 10325 pascal additional to that we have density of the water what is the density of the water that is 10 cube means 1000 and acceleration due to gravity how much that is 10 and what is the height height is very huge right 100 meters down right so 100 meters down is only we can say 10 square here so what you will going to get all the way right so <laughs> easily how can i say so 101.325 kilopascal that is the way how can i uh, i mean i can say this point plus this is nothing but 10 power 6 how can i write 10 power 6 10 power 6 is very easy to written that instead of this 10 power 6 we can even write down this as 1000 kilopascal that is also correct correct so now 1000 kilopascal plus 100.325 so how can i write down this one so it is nothing but 1101.325 kilopascal clear this is the proper answer i think many students have already given the answer very good right so the final answer here is going to be 1101.325 kilopascals what would be the correct option correct option is option b okay is it clear so far shall i go one step beyond this i feel that everybody is able to follow the section if you say yes we will go one step beyond this right so based on your feedback i will move forward if you say yes then we will go one step beyond this i need your explanation because the people are there but many of the students are not actually given the answer yes yes very deep good so i need the reply from every one of you <laughs> every one of you should give the reply should we go one step beyond this right so deepak is saying yes what about the other people mohan and Ritvik, all of you right so these are the basics in fact i have explained so far you know the fundamentals which are required it doesn't mean that you don't get any question from this already i have shown one question previously that was a gate previous year question and even this was a previous psu question and by the end of this lecture we will also see the interview questions also okay so moving ahead to the next one classification of pressure measurement this is very simple in majority of the cases whenever you are working in industries as well as whenever you are working in semiconductor industries also not only process industries you will be asked to classify the pressure in three different ways first one is the high pressure measurement second one is a medium pressure measurement third one is a low pressure measurement you must understand this the techniques what we adopt the mechanisms what we use the sensors what we deploy 
they are all different for different ranges of the pressure see it is quite natural right because we cannot use the manometer to measure the weight of human body correct right so that's why we have these three different classification the first one is high pressure measurement usually it is in the order of kilopascal to megapascal clear so suppose if i want to measure the weight of a tree okay so we have a strand tall trees right and the huge amount of the weight and if you want to measure the pressure applied by the tree on the floor right so that is a huge amount of pressure right so if you want to measure up to mega pascals then we use the traditional sensors like a strain gauge and piezoelectric material and capacitive techniques of course there are so many techniques i am not going so deep into this these are the sensors which are capable to measure the high pressure that's why we always use the load cell which is made up of strain gauge specially to measure high amount of pressure even if you look at the gate questions right oh after long back navin has given the answer i think navin you have to be very fast right 95 that was the answer to the very first question okay so strain gauge load cell you have seen right so even if you refer the previous year gate questions specially on the strain gauge it will be mentioned like this a strain gauge is used to measure 10 power 5 pascals or 10 power 6 pascal what does it mean it means that the load cell which is prepared by the strain gauge is capable to measure mega pascals clear so similarly like piezoelectric material also they are very high pressure measurement sir please teach the derivation of dynamic characteristics of youtube manometer and inclined manometer see benerji as i was saying this class i have to go from the basics right if i suddenly start the dynamic pressure there are many students in the back they can't understand that so if you have this idea of dynamic characteristics which is a very typical topic you can see my recorded lecture or else you can separately ping me i will share the particular lecture with you okay otherwise we will try to cover at the end of that because without understanding the basics if i go directly to that other students will not understand anything okay now medium pressure measurement so the pressure range is usually from pascal to uh, kilopascal right so here we will use the sensors like youtube manometer elastic materials when it comes to elastic material we are going to use a diaphragms and bodan tubes and you know there are uh, so many special devices are there we will see that also and most importantly low pressure low pressure means even it is less than vacuum okay very very less pressure right so in that case sensors we use youtube manometer can be used and additional to that we will use low pressure gauges and these low pressure gauges includes thermocouple gauge and followed to that we will be having you know pirani gauge mcleod gauge and knudsen gauge there are ionization gauge all these gauges will be there on the low pressure gauges clear so these all we have to study one by one but we will mainly focus on this and this in this lecture because this thing will fall in the separate category clear now moving ahead the very important topic of the day that is barometer i think i have taken a lot of explanation to explain so let's see how barometer works and you will also understand where we apply how we will apply and what is the advantage of this right so at a fundamental level barometer is used to measure the atmospheric pressure wherever you are you might be in london or you might be in us or you might be in india wherever you are if you require to measure the atmospheric pressure we can use the barometer okay uh, Shishank, sir, please teach low pressure gauges. Definitely, I will cover that, Shashank. What, what Banerjee is asking, that we cannot combine here because that is a little bit deep topic. First of all, before going to there, you require to know some other topics also. Right? Banerjee, don't worry. I will definitely help you. Take my words. Okay? So, and I am giving a promise to you. Definitely, I will help you. Okay? So, Shashank, <laughs> so atmospheric pressure, if you want to measure, we need to go with the barometer. And day after tomorrow, we will go into see the low pressure gauges. Now, this is the way how the barometer looks like, you know, uh, it looks like a simple watch where you can see the reading of the pressure and even if you see on hill stations, suppose if you travel to any hill station like Kedarnath, Badrinath, Gangotri, these hill stations, people do use this kind of setups, right? So, wall mounted barometer. So, every resort in Gangotri, when I travel there, so I have seen in many majority of the places they used to have barometer which is uh, tagged or which is placed just outside the room okay so this is uh, the general way how it looks like a conventional barometers now we will see how barometer really measures this atmospheric pressure okay from the barometer we will go to piezometer and then we will go to low pressure gauges right so now most important thing is 
Suppose if you have a capillary pipe like this, assume that this is a capillary tube. Am I clear to all of you? Banerjee, I think you are so serious on me, I guess. <laughs> right? Okay. So, is it clear so far? Suppose if you have a capillary pipe like this, assume that we have a capillary tube like this. Right? So, in this capillary tube, what we do is we will fill the mercury up to the top. Right? So, up to top, we will go into fill with the mercury here. Right? So, let us consider that we have a mercury here. So, let us consider that this is a mercury. As I was saying, this is a mercury in the capillary pipe. Right? So, what we do is, if you want to find out the atmospheric pressure, look at that. We have a container and in the container, again, this is also mercury only. Okay? So, let us say, this is also mercury only. Clear? And we will take this capillary tube, which is almost filled with the mercury, and we will return this and keep in the container. Suppose, let us say, this is a capillary pipe. Assume that this is a capillary pipe, and it is full of the mercury. Then I will take this and turn this side and keep in the container like this. Clear? In the container. Then what will going to happen? Surprisingly, look at the beauty of this one, right? So, before we place the return before we are going to place this capillary pipe because we will hold at the bottom and we will turn and place in the container and then slowly I will take out the thumb here then what will going to happen initially when I turn this you know opposite side and place in the container maybe at starting we will be having full mercury from top to bottom isn't it at starting we will have full mercury from top to bottom right but after some time if you see you will be understanding very easily even if you use the barometer you will get this one so after some time if you see the mercury level slowly it will come down right it will come down come down come down right the reason is look at the beauty of this one suppose if you say the atmospheric pressure here <coughs> let's consider that the atmospheric pressure is acting on here right so let me say this is the atmospheric pressure for example at starting we have the mercury column up to here correct so mercury column up to here look at that because of this total mercury column right mercury column there is a lot of amount of pressure is acting in the downward direction right so assume that the atmospheric pressure is less compared to the pressure of the mercury inside the barometer then what will happen any one of you sir why we are taking the mercury good question <laughs> right already Ritviki has given the answer right and the second thing is we need to have a pattern if you take water it will turbulent so it will go here and there and we will not get any reading properly right so now you see at starting it is full mercury from here to here and the mercury which is there in the barometer it is applying more amount of pressure in the downward direction right because of the gravity the mercury will try to come now what will going to happen quite logically the total amount of the mercury which is there from here to here right it will apply the pressure opposite to the atmospheric pressure that is the reason why the mercury will come outside here and then the level will going to increase here so that means you will be able to see more amount of the mercury in the container here so see the mercury is coming out mercury is coming out when the mercury is coming out then obviously the level of the mercury here it will going to increase or decrease it will slowly decrease here slowly decrease here slowly decrease here decrease 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 and definitely at some particular point maybe exactly at this point it will going to be stagnant why because this is the point it will going to stop the reason is very simple what happens is when the mercury column slowly decreases its height inside the <coughs> capillary pipe at one particular value maybe the total amount of the pressure that is offered by this mercury inside the capillary now it is equal to atmospheric pressure then what will going to happen after that further reduction of this mercury column will not happen right so because it already reduced from here 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 and stopped here why after that you will not be able to see any outflow of the mercury from here <coughs> outflow of the mercury from here and here there is no rise in the mercury it will going to stop here clear so now you tell me how do we calculate <laughs> IT sector ka here boom chal raha hai sir kya is time government job hai so <coughs> I think somebody is messaging some 
विल सी लेटर राइट सो जानी वाई बाई गलत जगह में हाँ यस राइट सो राइट यू हैव ऑलरेडी आंसर सो फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर वी हैव ए क्लियर इंडिकेशन ऑफ द मर्क्यूरी कॉलम एंड दिस इज द मर्क्यूरी कॉलम इट इज ऑफरिंग सम प्रेजर एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू एक्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेजर दैट्स वाई फर्दर रिडक्शन ऑफ द मर्क्यूरी कॉलम इज नॉट हैपनिंग क्लियर फर्दर रिडक्शन इज नॉट हैपनिंग सपोज इफ आई से दिस इज हेच हियर क्लियर देन यू टेल मी वॉट इज द एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर right so that means we will reverse the capillary tube and we will keep in the container at starting full capillary pipe will be having the mercury slowly the mercury column will come down once the mercury column stops further coming down then we will measure the h here that is nothing but the height right now you tell me clearly h <laughs> so if it is h then what would be the pressure offered by this mercury column from here to here so the pressure offered by this mercury column would be written as rho into g into h clear so this is the pressure now offered by this mercury column and i am saying that the further reduction of the mercury column is not happening means this pressure offered by this mercury column it must be equal to the atmospheric pressure right so this is so simple to understand isn't it so therefore i should say this as atmospheric pressure is equal to rho g h is it clear to everyone right right so all of you any one of you so atmospheric pressure is equal to rho g h is it clear to all of you or not right rashekar itna slow kaisa ho sakta hai bo <laughs> right okay so rashekar is a little bit fast so atmospheric pressure is equal to rho m that means the density of the mercury here so that is what i need to have here and g into h now the most beautiful point is where rho m is the density of the mercury which is written as a 13600 kg per meter cube Z is the 9.81 uh, meter per second square. H is 760 mm Hg, right? So atmospheric pressure, as I said, it must be equal to rho m into g into h. So rho m is considered as 13,600. G is already known, and h also I have made. So as the height h, it is the indication of the mercury. We call that as a 760 mm of Hg. Simple, simple words, right? Now putting all these things. what is the final value here so if you take your calculator and if you calculate this you will going to get approximately this will come as 101325 you know pascals clear this is the value you will be getting and if you want you can try with this is it clear to all of you i am continuously speaking today and i want to know your updates on this and your idea on this is it clear to every one of you or not so when we have to take the reading of the barometer this is a first very good question right when you turn the capillary pipe so initially the capillary pipe is like this and we turn this and kept inside the container so the manometer liquid slowly it will come down and it will stop at one particular value and then from the bottom we will take the reading up to here and that is called the reading of the barometer <laughs> right shashank clear other students anyone right everyone so that is about atmospheric pressure now you must ask a question to me the interesting question here it would be like this right do you think that is it suggested to take the full capillary see earlier we have taken the mercury full here the reason is we don't want any air molecules inside the capillary but let us assume that what happens if the atmospheric pressure is more than the pressure of the fluid inside the manometer then what will happen now you should answer so correction factor should be added sir yeah, anyway correction factor should be added for everything okay right now in case assume that when you fill this assume that at starting at starting this is the complete height of the mercury correct so in that case if the atmospheric pressure is more than the pressure offered by this entire column of the mercury what will happen anyone what will happen now i will see how many of you really understood this what will happen if that is the case then actually this liquid will try to enter here right because of the huge atmospheric pressure heavy atmospheric pressure unfortunately it is packed correct unfortunately as it is packed the further liquid will not be able to enter here and that may even damage the barometer also clear so the first conclusion here is technically it says that we have to fill the capillary pipe with the mercury and turn it in real time we will not fill the capillary and we will turn it this side clear 
we need to ensure that the air molecule should not occupy the capillary pipe clear so i hope you understood this right so <coughs> idea is very simple atmospheric pressure is this now the question is <coughs> where do we really use this one right so i will tell you two different locations or two different situations you will simply love it this suppose above the sea level and below the sea level suppose let us take this particular barometer setup so this is a container first of all this is the container of the mercury right and this is actually barometer for us now you see starting itself this is considered as a reference let us consider this as a reference here so this is a reference level reference level means in short i can consider that as an initial level right sir can't we just put the empty capillary tube when the mercury will rise to height oh very good narendra very good question this is i love this question that is what the idea of the piezometer good this is what we require you should not go and study hundred and thousand different things you should study the basic thing and we should apply that concept in multiple things see narendra automatically he understood what is the basic concept of the piezometer whatever narendra is saying that is actually called as a piezometer anyway let me take this one first it is a reference level correct now suppose if you are above the <coughs> sea level assume that if you are above the sea level what do you mean by above the sea level above the sea level means maybe you can uh, consider that uh, on top of hill right so let me take top of hill on hill station so if you are on the top of hill tell me absolute atmospheric pressure is low or high any one of you any one of you on top of hill atmospheric pressure is low or high so it is quite evidence that the atmospheric pressure is low correct so on top of hill usually we will be having the low pressure so that means if you take this setup on top of hill what will going to happen this atmospheric pressure is very low here right so that means if you take this pressure which is acting here atmospheric pressure this is low then tell me what is the direction of the fluid here right so tell me whether this is correct or not here right suppose if the atmospheric pressure is low here so i am saying this is low now the mercury column here will come down like this or it will go up what will going to happen see you might have studied in the basic physics isn't it what is the correct answer will it come low downward direction that means the mercury in the capillary pipe will it come down or it will it go up what is the correct answer any one of you come down or goes up see simple simple questions i am asking but don't expect that i will only discuss the simple things because my students knows that after some time how deep we will go right right so the idea is very simple it will come down in a simple way it will come down so when it is coming down i am very sure that the mercury column will go like this right go like this then i can say clearly that suppose if it is coming down up to here right so that means manometer liquid level sorry barometer liquid level is uh, decreasing what does it mean it means that the atmospheric pressure is low lower than 760 mm of hg or lower than 101325 pascals clear so that means here on hill station i can conclude that atmospheric pressure value is actually less than 101325 pascal clear how much it is that depends upon the place where you are standing right now clear that is one thing now let us go to the another way here by chance so let me uh, go to the next level here suppose right so by chance if you are there above the sea level or below the sea level sorry below the sea level means you can even consider that you are in the sea water you are in the sea water then that means under water so under sea water you can see even under sea water then can you guess what will going to happen here under sea water if you take the barometer don't ask me actually barometers are used to find out the pressure under the sea also clear so in this case it is very easy to understand under the water <coughs> as the atmospheric pressure here or the pressure which is acting here will be more actually correct as the pressure acting on this so under the sea water means uh, under the sea level basically i am speaking about under the sea level okay so it is not under the sea water i am sorry it is not under the sea water it is just below the sea level right so below the sea level if you see atmospheric pressure it will be more actually correct so it will be more so as the atmospheric pressure is more 
we know that this is a reference satellite right so this is a reference level as i was saying now what will going to happen the liquid from the container it will try to go in this way and all the way it will travel in the upward direction right now it will occupy the new height here clear so that means i can say this is a high level so that means by chance if the level of the mercury inside the barometer is going above the reference level then i can consider that we are below the sea level clear we are below the sea level in case if the mercury in the barometer is coming down the reference level then i can understand that atmospheric pressure is lower than 101325 that means you are above the sea level so is it clear to every one of you yes isha agarwal very thank you thank you very much right so <laughs> every one of you so i think i have explained too much now let me explain the applications of this barometer and stop the session i require another 5 to 10 minutes can i handle the session well so these are the applications of barometer many times so we will be using this barometer so you see it is actually looking like a uh, clock wall clock right but it will actually indicate the pressure range and pressure and specially it will be used to forecast the weather weather condition and if you have barometer you can actually find whether the season is rainy that means tomorrow is it going to be rainy day or any cyclone is coming or uh, is it the dry weather or it is a cool weather what is the status of the weather in upcoming 2 to 3 hours that can be found by using the you know barometer you see here the indication is mentioned like rain here and you can see even very dry and stormy all these things are mentioned here right so if the reading is on rainy suppose if it is indicating the pressure on rain then it means that it is going to be rainy after some time clear so that's the beauty of this barometer and finally what i should say is it can be used for the weather forecasting clear and you can even find the measure uh, pressure under the water means usually the people who are actually traveling in the water under the sea the people used to be called as a scuba driver and they required to monitor the pressure so regularly and that's why they use the barometers and this is the way how it looks like clear so i hope i have even discussed about the basics also now let me tell you the interview questions i know that many of you are really waiting for the interview questions because i have explained the basics of barometer and i have explained the basics of pressure measurement now it's the time for us to see interview measure i mean interview questions okay so to go to the interview level in 5 to 10 minutes let me tell you a simple analysis temperature versus atmospheric pressure okay this is a very interesting ball game so please see suppose if the temperature is increasing tell me whether the pressure of the gas molecules will increase or decrease suppose let us consider that this is the atmosphere okay don't argue with me how it is atmosphere okay assume that this is the atmosphere and we have so many air molecules like this clear so i am asking a question to you that by chance in any case if the temperature of the atmosphere is increasing if the temperature increases what will happen to the atmospheric pressure any one of you now i will see how many of you really understanding this increases so the first answer came from shashank it is increasing why other people are not re are responding mohan ritvik deepak shashank narendra every one of you madhuri rash shekar so by chance if you increase the temperature atmospheric pressure will increase or decrease see this is where the interview questions will not be like so difficult they will start from very fundamentals and they will take you and drag you to the high level okay now i am asking how temperature and atmospheric pressure both relates because this is the air molecules so you can use the gas law right <laughs> now i am asking if the temperature is increased no need to apply any law no need to apply any physics apply common sense at least correct so we have air molecules here it is quite logical that whenever the temperature is increased then the air molecules will try to get the heat energy and from the heat energy their kinetic energy will improve and when the kinetic energy is increased logically they will going to displace everywhere here right so they will go and they will travel everywhere here right so when they are traveling like this here and there right so what will going to happen now right so they are traveling so fast the kinetic energy is increasing and i can say the volume is increasing now right so because they are going to expand now the gas particles will go and they will occupy large amount of area because of that quite logically let me write down here the volume occupied by the gas 
will naturally increase right however the air particle mass is not changing right so the overall mass shashank pdf milega yes 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 it will right so volume increases when the volume increases i am saying clearly that the mass will not change then what will happen for the density here so we all have studied in the basic physics that the density can be written as a mass per volume here right now volume is actually increasing however the mass is not changing mass of the air particles are not changing then the overall density will going to decrease right so that means the density which is called as a rho it will going to decrease if the density is reducing then what would be the pressure here so obviously when the density is reducing the pressure can be of definitely it will going to reduce isn't it the pressure will going to reduce so many of you have given the answer as increasing but the real answer here is when we increase the temperature then naturally the pressure of the gas will going to reduce here clear so that means it will going to reduce right i have clearly told you why it is because the mass is not changing but the volume will expand right when it is expanding the volume will be more so the density will going to be less when the density is less <laughs> we are going to use the total uh, height column occupied by the air molecules will be again rho into g into h when the density is reducing then the pressure will going to automatically reduce so what would be the answer here finally so pressure is going to decrease or increase so the answer is if the temperature increases then i am very sure that the pressure will going to decrease here clear pressure will going to decrease so is it clear to all of you yes or no pressure will going to decrease similarly you can even reverse the statement also right so suppose in case if the temperature reduces here then obviously the reverse will going to happen contraction will going to happen that means the air molecules will come close the volume will increase and the density will going to sorry volume will reduce and the density will going to increase at the time the pressure of the our atmospheric pressure will actually going to be increased here clear so this is atmospheric pressure is it clear to all of you or not happy to learn oh, very very thankful to thankful right so see how easily many of you have wrongly answered this right so that's why you never should feel over confident okay always try to apply common sense did i apply the boyle's law did i apply some newton's law did i apply that law and this law i have applied the basic physics and the basic physics is saying this one right now i got the beauty of fundamentals sir that's why i'm saying that the fundamentals are very important okay right so <laughs> right ultimately when the temperature is increasing atmospheric pressure will decrease and when the temperature is decreasing then atmospheric pressure will increase keep this point in another 5 minutes i will going to ask you one of the very important question so please keep this point right now if you go to the next one now yes now you tell me what happened in the barometer liquid here right suppose let us say when the temperature is like a uh, uh, 30 degrees centigrade right 30 degrees centigrade so for example when the temperature is 30 degrees centigrade so <coughs> this is exactly at this reference level clear this is at exactly at this reference level right so maybe let me consider this is a reference level particularly at 30 degrees centigrade right so t1 let me call initial temperature 30 degrees centigrade and this is a reference level 1 means when the temperature is 30 degrees centigrade barometer indication is exactly here by chance if at all the temperature is increased to let us say t2 i am taking which is equal to 50 degrees centigrade now you tell me whether the barometer when whether the mercury column in the barometer will come down or move up what will happen will it come down or will it go up any one of you now i will understand how many of you really understood this whether this this mercury inside this capillary will go high or come down will increase or decrease its level right i think i am taking little bit more time so i feel that because you people are so energetic and answering every question so i am going forward okay right so will it come down or will it move up any one of you so the answer is very easy in quite interesting also because at t1 temperature starting 30 degrees at that time we have this level right but when the temperature is increasing what will going to happen atmospheric pressure which is acting here its value will going to decrease so as the atmospheric pressure became weak right as the atmospheric pressure is weak they again again you are doing the mistake right so as this value as this value is getting low right getting low it is getting decreased 
as this value is getting decreased when the temperature is increased what will happen so very good very good many of you have answered this will come down here and all the way it will go in this way that means the new level will be here right so the new level will be here now i should ask a question to you right so look at that this particular height difference let me say this is a height difference delta h clear this is a height difference delta h is a height difference and what is the temperature difference temperature difference is t2 minus t1 correct so that means i can say first starting temperature is 30 degrees centigrade now it is 50 degrees centigrade the gap between these two temperatures is going to be how much 20 degrees centigrade because of that 20 degrees temperature change the level is changed it is coming down so can i say this delta t difference in the temperature is actually creating difference in the height indicated by the mercury inside the barometer is it correct or wrong tell me <coughs> yes definitely it's correct right so that means if you know this value here if you know what is the delta h then you can find out what is the value of the delta t that's fantastic thing isn't it right that is how we can even find the temperature also clear that's why i told you that barometer can be used to measure the temperature also right so this means that any pressure measurement you take if the pressure measurement is giving the value in level that can be connected to many things and here we have connected that to the temperature clear i am not saying that you know 20 degree centigrade will change it 20 meters here or 20 centimeters i am saying that there is a relation between temperature and this change in the height indicated by the mercury column so is it clear to all of you right now the next one is humidity versus atmosphere now i will ask a question humidity suppose if i say humidity is increased if the humidity is increased tell me what will happen to the atmospheric pressure now i will answer how many of you understood right a very interesting class today so many students are regularly discussing very happy right so tell me if the humidity is increasing atmospheric pressure will decrease or increase any one of you so simple if the humidity is increasing it means that the water vapor content is increasing in the air molecule right so humidity is increasing means i can say suppose if i say for example these are the air molecules right so starting <coughs> in the air molecules i can say starting we will be having oxygen nitrogen and all these things mixture so much and we will be having very less amount of water content here very less amount of water content it is normal condition normal condition clear normal condition but generally what happens is in case if at all high humid conditions so it is like humid conditions means if suppose if the humidity is more what will going to happen here if the humidity is more then most of the content in the air molecule is water vapor only it is water vapor right so it is a air molecule water vapor will be more and we will be having oxygen nitrogen and all rest of the nonsense very less proportion clear so this will lead to what this will lead to see now what will happen here the mass is very high if you see this particular molecule right so i take let me take two minutes of time here right so <laughs> simple question so in this case this air molecules mass is actually very high why it is very high here we have less amount of water vapor but more amount of oxygen nitrogen and all these molecules but whereas here in this case mass is low why because water content is more compared to the oxygen and rest of other things clear so that means mass is actually reduced here correct mass is reduced right but the volume because the air molecules are same number of air molecules they are not traveling here and there so the volume remains same that means mass is decreasing volume is unchanged then what will going to happen here any guess if this is a case it is a straight answer that the density because the density usually we consider this as a rho which is nothing but mass per volume and as i was saying volume is not changed but mass is decreasing here as the mass is decreasing the density will reduce and if the density is reducing then i can say finally the atmospheric pressure will going to decrease here clear atmospheric pressure will going to decrease what does it mean it means that if the humidity is increased then atmospheric pressure will going to decrease here 
clear so then if you look at the barometer again the same thing will going to happen like what we have seen previously right how to determine the humidity right so we can feel <laughs> very good right so excellent excellent i think so many students have already answered this right so very good so now even in this case also as the atmospheric pressure value it is decreasing so as the atmospheric pressure value is decreasing here again the level of, it will come down right so the i mean like the fluid in the capillary pipe it will come down and now from the reference level it will come down again clear so all the way it will come down like this to the new level this means even when the humidity is increasing atmospheric pressure will decrease so can i say now looking at the atmospheric pressure first of all barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure correct so if the barometer is used to measure the atmospheric pressure then from this atmospheric pressure i can say humidity value so whether it is more humid or whether it is less humid whether the outside temperature is more or less all things i can assess and if you can assess all these things that is only called as a weather forecasting isn't it that's all for shortcut right so <laughs> that's all now this is one of the good question which even i was also received right one of my interviews right so this this question i want to ask actually any one of you if the barometer levels are falling suddenly then it forecast dash situation clear so this question is one of the good question any one of you so if the barometer levels are falling suddenly look at the word suddenly here look at the word suddenly that is very important then it forecast dash situation let me see how many of you will answer so if the barometer uh, levels are suddenly i mean coming down what does it mean ah very good deepak cyclone any other raining dry weather none of this see most of you may feel that right so first starting submarine questions and the gas pressure questions they are the gate level questions but these are psu level questions and these can be interview questions also clear they may ask like how do you use the barometer uh, to measure the uh, pressure in the hill station so what will happen to the barometer what are fluid level all this can be any possible interview questions isn't it right raining none cyclone okay isha agarwal very good right so see what it was mentioned barometer levels are falling very suddenly suddenly falling means immediately they drop what does it mean immediately they drop means what any one of you right so that means immediately they drop so immediately they dropped means atmospheric pressure become very very low correct atmospheric pressure is becoming low in your place means what will happen the air pressure around you is low so then the wind from some other location it will come very fast to you correct so that means i am standing here in bangalore in studio room right atmospheric pressure is low here because the barometer levels are falling down means atmospheric pressure is low right so suddenly the atmospheric pressure is low then what will happen wind will flow from the other parts to here or from here to other parts right so naturally it will happen that now the wind will start flowing from the high pressure zone to my area my studio room so the wind will all the way come here right so as the temperature is falling suddenly as the barometer liquid levels are falling suddenly the atmospheric pressure will become suddenly less so when the atmospheric pressure is suddenly less obviously the wind from all the way it will come to my studio room right then it will become a wind storm or we can call that as a cyclone clear so that is what it is considered as a cyclone is a final answer here right so and many of the students what they answer is dry weather okay so for this question you should get the proper answer so now i have given that definitely this is not the answer correct definitely this is not the answer because in the gradual change we can expect that as a raining right of course raining will uh, cause somehow it is related to the humidity also right but now i am saying that the barometer levels are coming down means the pressure is atmospheric pressure around you it is coming down correct it is coming down atmospheric pressure is coming down means two things you can guess one is the temperature is increasing that is one possible way right and the second thing is the wind from other locations it will try to come to you know right so it will go for you know i am correct sir very good right so obviously it may go for the cyclone wind storm correct so there are two possible answers here b and c right and i am seeing here there are some students who has given c and some students who has given b right now i am leaving here and you should 
think for this question and which would be the appropriate answer b or c whether should i go for the dry weather or should i go for the cyclone which would be the correct answer for this explanation right now both of these two are looking correct right at this point of time am i right so now you should start thinking about this do you really require some additional information for this to answer or if you require what is the additional information you require otherwise with the information what you are having what would be the correct option between b and c or is it really happens in this way that cyclone and dry weather both can coexist so what would be your exact answer with this right i am very interested to know this and we will going to meet with this answer if you get the answer please drop your answer in the comment section because i always leave to give some work to you and this is a work to you today session clear so again tomorrow we will going to meet at same time 7:30 pm and we will discuss about the piezometer and all other related stuff as i promised at the beginning of this lectures i will definitely handle the low pressure measurements also don't miss any class i just want your confirmation here have you really enjoyed today session or not right i require your answers so every one of you please keep your comments in the chat box have you really enjoyed this session or not if you really enjoyed let's connect at 7:30 pm tomorrow and we'll discuss about the piezometer and the homework for you for today session is this what should be your answer b or c okay so well fine guys so i really yes sir enjoyed a lot yes yes dipak i too enjoyed a lot usually we took so much of time today right thank you for beautiful session thank you shashank thank you very much so <laughs> tomorrow we'll meet at the enjoyed sir thank you thank you very much thank you very much right so tomorrow we'll meet at the same time but don't miss your homework you should give tomorrow our discussion will start from this question whether it is b or c you should give the correct answer anyway we will go with the so many concepts in tomorrow session and we will meet at the same time 7:30 pm to discuss more about the pressure measurement thanks once again to every one of you let's continue the session with more and more energy thank you very much